Ah, oh, Shabbat Shalom, people, 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 people. How you guys doing? I was looking for my Shabbat sign. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Uh, I'm glad to be back. Uh, well, I was on the road yesterday again. Never been on the road so many times in my life in a long time, but I have some exciting things to share today with you guys. Um, I have a testimony. Uh, it's really amazing because I was uh, just on the road here. I think we went out uh, Thursday, then we went on the road Friday, but Thursday was out on the road uh, going to the store, going out doing errands, and I seen uh, uh, this this on the road, I, I seen a tractor on the road, a tractor on the road, and then uh, after that, <clears throat> after we seen the tractor on the road, uh, going away from the house coming back home we see another tractor on the road the first tractor on the road was like holding the traffic up people couldn't get by you know and he just going on going on going on and then the second time we came back uh it was a big tractor on the road and he got over off the road like on this picture he got over off the road and let the people go by uh, but the other tractor guy, he was just going on and on and on, you know. And so I asked the father what that meant. And so when I came on to do a video today, I saw a, a, a guy, uh, I don't even know his name. Uh, he's doing a ministry. Uh, and I just wrote a little comment in his box and asked him, could I share your, little, uh, share your video? I didn't wait to hear back, so I hope it'll be okay. But I want to share what he's talking about famine and that's what the father exactly told me famine is coming famine is coming uh so we're going to be talking about famine today we're going to be talking about um we got a message i just got a message coming from betty s betty s you guys who know should know who betty s is okay uh we sharing her message uh gonna be doing some uh things come from uh, kevin uh, we got some material from uh, my brother in Florida, uh, Lewis in Florida, uh, and then we're going to be talking, the, the Boo 77 is talking about this airplane going over in uh, Mississippi area. Uh, just a lot going on. There's so much news, I can't even share it all, people. Uh, but first, we're going to go to Israel news and get into some Israel news, uh, and then I'm going to be showing some material coming from missions today. Uh, end time dream and visions, uh, feed my sheep today. Uh, and also we're going to go into the Bible, uh, Isaiah 55. It's really amazing. Isaiah 55 came up today, uh, because it's talking about come by, eat, you know, and we talk about famine. So, uh, we know a lot of things going to be happening. So I have a lot of news material to cover. I have some announcements that I'm going to show you guys. Uh, that you can go look at some material that I haven't even looked at, but I want to look at today sometime. So I'll be sharing some links uh, on the screen that you can go look at with me because uh, we got a lot of material to cover. And uh, I know I was reading about the spaceship going up. They had canceled it another time. They, they're not going to put it up till probably Monday, uh, tomorrow. I don't know, but uh, I think God is in the hands of that too, you know, because I don't feel good about that whole thing. But I think God is in control of everything, as Betty S. said, and she have a message, an important message just came out today on Shabbat. So I'm going to be sharing that. And so let me get on into a song coming from Mia. Oh, one of my favorite songs. I haven't played it in a while. So I hope you guys enjoying your Sabbath. So let me go and go, go on over here to my, um, before I get into the song. Let me go on over to um, my, um, my, uh, my, 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 yeah, my uh, <clears throat> declaimer and stuff like that. So let me go ahead and do it. Uh, I really uh, know I've been going on the road. I'm kind of worn out today, guys, a little bit. So just bear with me if I seem to be just really off a little bit here. But you know me. I'm just me. I'm going to be myself, be myself, be myself. So anyway, uh, this is... Uh, Click the subscribe, like bell, uh, subscribe to your YouTube channel, uh, click the like button, click the notification notification bell. My husband says my husband is busy today. He's on the phone again. I don't know some things going on. Uh, we have to pray with others and do all kind of things going on in the family. So 
Uh, we just know, I may not see him on here with me today, so if you know he's not here, he might join me later. I never know. So let me go ahead and say that this is the fair use notice uh, in front of you. And uh, the claimer. And, uh, you know, I, I tell you, just so many things are happening. I, oh, my goodness. So many things are going on. Uh, so uh, we just going to have to just stay close to the Father at this time, much as possible, people, much as possible. The devil trying to beat us down, you know, and try to make us look like we are losing. But really, he have lost already. So we need to just keep, keep our eyes on Yeshua. So I'm going to go ahead now and play this wonderful song, Words I Pray to Yahweh. And we'll get into the news and other things for today. And I hope you guys really uh, share these videos. Okay, share them because I know I'm not a big, big ministry. But uh, a lot of people are coming in, uh, new subscribers. I thank you for the new subscribers, new givers. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, play uh, this song right now. Let me mute it out. Uh, let me see. I'll read it out. And at the end of this video, we're going to get into Maranatha today. Very interesting topic. Talking about all nations follow America's lead. All nations follow America's lead. So that's really what's about to happen here in the world. So the whole world will want the after the beast system as well. So let me go ahead and uh, put this on. Let me read it out. Uh, yeah, let me read this out. Oh, did I even do that yet? Hold on, guys. I'm messing up something here. So let me go ahead and mute this out now.
TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. U.S. and European officials express frustration after an Iranian response to an EU document aimed at reviving the 2015 nuclear agreement was labeled as a step backwards. Pentagon Press Secretary Brigadier General Pat Ryder says the RGC's attempt to steal a U.S. naval sail drone earlier this week is indicative of Iranian behavior in the region for many years. Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gunn thanks the United States for approving the sale of four aerial tankers, which will significantly ratchet up Israel's qualitative military edge versus Iran. In what is described by U.S. officials as a step backwards, the latest Iranian response to U.S. input of an EU document aimed at reviving the 2015 nuclear agreement has diminished hopes of imminent breakthrough. Moreover, according to senior Biden administration officials who were cited by the U.S.-based Politico media company, a preliminary study of the Iranian response is not at all encouraging, a position shared by a European diplomat who referred to the Iranian response as negative and not reasonable. Nevertheless, according to the Iranian foreign ministry in Tehran, the comments had been formulated out of a constructive approach aimed at completing the negotiations to re-enter the nuclear agreement. And while the contents of the Iranian response remain obscure, the two points which were raised by Iranian Foreign Minister Hassan Amir Abdullahian in Moscow and reported on by TV7 yesterday indicate that the points of contention remain on Tehran's unyielding demands including for the International Atomic Energy Agency, or IAEA, to abandon its outstanding investigations into undeclared nuclear materials, which were uncovered in Iran in breach of Tehran's NPT commitments, and for U.S. guarantees that any future administration would not be able to scrap a potentially revived deal without severe penalties in favor of the Islamic Republic. Meanwhile, despite the apparent setback, French ambassador to the United Nations, Nicolas de Rivière, whose country is set to assume the presidency of the UN Security Council, insisted that the 2015 nuclear agreement remains a valid document. La résolution reste valide, l'accord reste valide. La seule chose, c'est que il avait été, euh, d'une certaine manière, partiellement vidé de sa substance par les décisions de l'administration américaine en 2018, euh, dans un premier temps, puis ensuite par le fait que l'Iran Euh, voyant cela, avait décidé de, euh, de, 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 de s'abstraire euh, de ses propres obligations sur le volet nucléaire. Donc ce dont on a besoin, c'est que euh, les uns et les autres reviennent à une pleine application de leurs obligations euh, euh, découlant euh, du JCPOA et de la résolution 2231. Meanwhile, reports alleging that Moscow procured Iranian unmanned aerial vehicles, which are expected to serve Russia in its invasion of Ukraine, have been vehemently denied by the Russian foreign ministry as Western propaganda, even though it acknowledged that cooperation between the defense ministries in both Moscow and Tehran have been developing dynamically. Мы считаем, что эта тема искусственно вбрасывалась в американские средства массовой информации, в том числе со стороны Вашингтон Пост, искусственно раскручивалась. Второе, комментировал ее уже пресс-секретарь президента Российской Федерации, комментировал исчерпывающе. Ранее помощник президента России Юрий Викторович Шаков обозначил, что закупка беспилотников не обсуждалась в ходе встреч президента России с иранским руководством в Тегеране 19 июля. А что касается взаимодействия между оборонными ведомствами двух стран, оно, оно действительно Despite Zakharova's comments, which were made while Iranian Foreign Minister Amir Abdullahian visited Moscow earlier this week, effectively sought to portray the West as deliberately spreading misinformation to demonize Russia, Tehran's incessant desire to portray itself as a major contender on the international stage drove the commander of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, Major General Hussein Salami, to boast in a recent sale of homegrown military equipment to foreign customers, including some major world powers. The RGC commander boastfully confirmed, quote, 
A number of the world's top ranking powers are willing to purchase military and defense equipment from the Islamic Republic. Indeed, this process has materialized as they are currently using the Iranian arms and receiving training. And while not mentioning Russia by name, the statement effectively corroborates intelligence information that was released by the Pentagon, citing a first shipment of hundreds of Iranian-made unmanned aerial vehicles to Russia and that Russian operators are currently undergoing training over the systems in Iran. It is important to highlight that the Ayatollah regime in Tehran has instructed its revolutionary guards and military industry to prioritize the development of its unmanned aerial systems, regarding it as the decisive weapons of future wars and a deterrent against its long list of adversaries. <laughs> از جمله جنگ افزارهای سرنوشت ها در جنگ های آینده هست توانمندی ملت ما و نیروهای مسلح کشور جمهوری اسلام ایران به میزانی هست که میتواند در مقابل همه تهدیدات ایستادگی کنه و آزمود را آزمودن خطا Earlier this week, an Islamic Revolutionary Guards Navy vessel attempted to steal an American naval drone in what U.S. military sources have told TV7 was yet another blatant Iranian attempt to steal U.S. military technology. Nevertheless, as was the case in the past, an immediate response by the U.S. Navy thwarted the Iranian attempt. The U.S. Navy observed the IRGCN uh, IRGC Navy support ship towing a sail drone explorer unmanned surface vessel uh, in what we assessed was an attempt to to detain it. Uh, and so the uh, the USS Thunderbolt uh, and a uh, MH60S Seahawk uh, responded. Uh, we did hail the ship and ask them to release uh, the drone, which they did. Uh, and so um, I, would, I would join General Carrillo, I'm sure you saw his statement, and just commending the professionalism, the competence of the crew of the USS Thunderbolt, which ultimately prevented Iran uh, from essentially stealing uh, one of our drones, uh, our um, uh, unmanned surface vessels. Asked whether the Iranian attempt to steal U.S. assets in the Persian Gulf could be characterized as a pattern, Brigadier General Ryder highlighted the following. I, I hesitate to characterize it as a pattern other than to say uh, that it's indicative of the kind of behavior that we've seen from Iran in the region for, frankly, many years uh, when it comes to this kind of disruptive and inappropriate activity. Um, and so uh, having, having watched uh, in the past some of the uh, activities of uh, the IRGC Navy, um, you know, this is not, not the first time they've done these kinds of things. And so, again, it, it just showcases uh, the challenge that Iran presents uh, in terms of the threat to the region uh, and a, another reason why we'll continue to work very closely uh, with our partners and our allies in the region to help provide the stability that's important uh, to keep uh, not only the sea lanes open, but the health and safety of, of those that are operating in that area. Asked further whether the United States was concerned about a reported uptick in deliberate Israeli activities against Iranian targets in Syria and elsewhere, General Ryder stressed the long-standing security relationship with its ally Israel in the Middle East. You know, certainly we have a very long-standing security relationship uh, with our ally Israel. Um, I'm not going to talk about specific uh, details when it comes to um, consultation, cooperation, coordination, things like that, other than to say, again, uh, we maintain a very robust dialogue uh, with this important ally in the region. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid held a working meeting with Mossad Director David Barna ahead of the latter's trip to the United States next week, during which he is expected to brief senior U.S. officials in Washington on Israel's deep-rooted concerns regarding the Islamic Republic of Iran with chief focus on Jerusalem's perceived flaws of the nuclear agreement. During the meeting with Lapid, the two discussed the Mossad director's preparations for Israel's continued effort to avert what Barna dubbed earlier this week a strategic catastrophe.
Separately, Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz, who recently returned from a similar working visit to the United States, warmly welcomed a decision by the U.S. Department of Defense to provide Israel with four advanced aerial tankers, which will significantly enhance the Israeli Air Force capacity to strike long-distance targets. In his statement, Defense Minister Gantz wrote, I thank the U.S. Department of Defense for signing with Boeing the refueling deal that is important to Israel's security, which I began to promote about two years ago. Jerusalem's top defense official further highlighted that the refueling planes that we are purchasing, along with the purchase of the new F-35 Squadron, the transport helicopters, the submarines, and the advanced armaments, will serve the IDF in the face of the enormous challenges near and far that lie ahead. Minister Gantz concluded his statement by asserting that Washington's will to sell Israel the advanced systems is yet another proof to the unbreakable alliance and the strategic relations of the Israeli and American defense establishments. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. It is important for us to highlight that TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry. Therefore, if you're blessed by our productions, please consider making a financial contribution that in turn will enable us to sustain our ongoing operations. Additionally, I would like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide and for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shabbat Shalom Mevorach and we will see you again on Monday at the same time. Shalom, I'm Jonathan Hassan, the Editor-in-Chief of TV7 Israel, and I would like to personally invite you to join us for our bi-weekly Jerusalem Studio programs for a better in-depth understanding of Israel and its region. Okay guys, I'm going to uh, put this in the description box, the Messianic World Update, okay? I'm going to put it in the description box, okay, today, because I have a lot of material to cover, but uh, I know he's taking place of Monte Judah, so uh, you can go there and listen to it. I know feast, uh, the feast days are coming up, so I know he's talking about that a little bit and some other things going on, so, but I will put it in the description box for you guys, uh, and I'm going to get on over to some other news right now. So I just wanted you to know that, and um, actually, um, I will go ahead and talk about these other updates, uh, announcements I have to show. I think I will go ahead and do the announcements now. Uh, some material that I want you to go look at, if you get a chance to go look at it. Uh, we got, um, oh, wait, is it here? I had it here a while ago. I have so much stuff up here that I can't find out where I'm at. But anyway, um, is some other material here this one here um 
www.aminutetomidnight.com. Prepare things are rapidly starting to break down. Talking about the end of cars, the crushing of the economy, and different things going on. You can see the titles here. So I did show this one here. I may play it again. A uh, short video about the uh, Pope Francis. Uh, so you know, it's a lot going on. So and it's another one. Signs of the times. I think this one here. Uh, signs of the last days. Uh, he's got a uh, information out that I'm going to watch today. Not for 21 minutes. Not that long. Iran confirms demon prince war strategy on Israel. So it's time to watch all eyes on Israel. As my friend Charles Whelan uh, over in Alabama always talked about, you know, Iran uh, would be next, you know, and all these things are going on in the news. Uh, so we need to keep our watch on what's going on in Israel and other nations and other things going on around the world. So I'm going to go ahead and play some other little short videos now. But I want to mention those two. Uh, I'm going to play uh, this guy uh, from Lewis and Floyd and some other little things. But this guy here, uh, Worldwide Famine, is almost here, Dr. Gene Kim. I'm going to actually uh, let him talk a little bit because I told you about the tractors I've seen, okay? And so it really means something, people. I, I told my husband, how can you be living in Colorado? We live out on a kind of uh, sub, uh, little rural little area out from Canyon City. And, um, and I'm like, we go out and we got this tractor in the road. Then we go out and come back home, another tractor. And I mean, what? We never seen two tractors. I never even seen one tractor in a long, long, long time. So I'm like, wow, that has to mean something. And the Holy Spirit told me famine, famine. So I definitely want to uh, let this brother talk about his title of famine, famine as well. So let me go ahead now and get into some other news. And we'll get into uh, this brother here, uh, Real Bible Believers. Uh, here's a little bit of what he's talking about, Worldwide Famine. I will be talking about that soon as I get through some other news. Okay, so let me go ahead and do this right now. Uh, mute out again. My name is Louis. Today is September 2nd, 2022, and welcome to the Grand Supreme News Channel. Before I start, guys, give this video a big thumbs up and share this video. We got some breaking news updates, and guys, we have some huge information coming out. Very important stuff. Mega drought warning millions of sleeping giant with loss of water and power. A great transformation is going on within our sleeping giants. I'm seeing a lot of things happening, guys. Not good stuff. We are seeing lawlessness, mega drought, flood, troubled times. I mean, we are seeing it, we are living it, and we are witnessing Bible prophecy happening right in front of our face. If you ask me, I feel like uh, the sleeping giant right now is being judged. So millions of sleeping giants will be impacted let me show you the map right here, guys, from the year 2000 to 2022. It's getting worse every year. So this is a wake-up call. This is a huge wake-up call. They're doing water cuts. They're telling people to not use extra water. You can't water your plants anymore. And pretty soon, power will go off. All right, guys, before I start, give this video a big thumbs up. Kaufman World News Report today. Today is September 3rd, 2022, 2.30 p.m. Central here in the U.S., God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world, folks. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we had several hours of geomagnetic disturbances and a geomagnetic storm this morning, and NASA is not blaming it on the coral hole winds yet. They said that those will not hit till the 4th. They said that a crack in Earth's magnetic field on September 3rd opened and allowed solar winds in, sparking an 
unexpected, unpredicted G1 class geomagnetic storm. The photo you see here was taken by Waleta Gorkeka, and she photographed these auroras over Iceland. The show was absolutely stunning, says Gorkeka. I was going to take a photo of the Milky Way, but, well, the Milky Way was green auroras. So everything is being actually blamed on this crack that opened up in the Earth's atmosphere again. The storm is over now, but another could soon begin. NOAA has issued a watch for a G2-class solar storm on September 4th. When solar winds from the coral hole are expected to reach Earth. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you will soon see from my next video, these are not the solar winds that we're expecting from the coral hole. They're not due until tomorrow. Strange stuff's going on. God bless you and yours. Kevin here, bringing you a Labor Day weekend update. I've got a few more videos that I'm lining up for you, but I had some breaking news, some urgent updates that I needed to bring to your attention that I noticed. PFS on YT, previously preparing for survival, AKA my wife posted a video this morning. Actually, she posted a live, she went live this morning if anybody caught the live stream. But ironically, uh, immediately after the live stream, it was missing and check out her channel i'm not going to talk about in great detail what she was sharing on that live stream but she's got a video uploaded now uh related to it and the reason why she has that video up is because we were having difficulty uploading that video and so i said hey she said this is very important i want to make sure that everybody's aware i want to make sure that people know what's going on and they're being uh they can prepare and, and avoid this area and avoid any possible uh, negative outcome from what's going on. And I said, well, if the upload's not working, go ahead and go live and get the information out, get the news out. And I know your audience is going to appreciate you for that. So giant heart, huge heart, always thinking about everybody else before herself. So she went live, even though she was like, oh, I'm not. I'm not made up. I'm not ready for live. She did it anyway. But ironically, after the live was done, it was gone. It was just nowhere. And uh, we actually got family in town visiting us for our daughter's birthday. And they said, we were watching your live stream. We, we just saw you went live. And like, she's like, yeah. And then it got it was over with. And then it said it was gone. Like, it just disappeared. Strange. Very odd. Very strange. Now, if you guys are aware of what's going on with the Walmart out in uh, Tupelo, Mississippi, that, you know, she was speaking on that. Additionally, uh, it seems like this situation has moved over to a, a Toyota plant nearby. And uh, ultimately, there's a situation going on out there that folks need to be aware of and be cognizant of. And, you know, I think this is just a thought, not no factual information behind it. It's just an opinion. But I think that today we have more and more opportunities and possibilities of folks kind of like going off the deep end with the struggles in the economy, with the struggles of inflation, with the struggles in the job market, which ironically, I'm working on putting together, like I stopped what I was doing, putting together one of my future videos for you guys to bring you some information about the housing market and the effects that we're seeing the lumber market have on the housing market and some correlations there with the price of lumber, price per board foot, where it was before, where it is today, the futures of these prices and where they're going and trying to do a little bit of a foreshadowing and uh, pontificate on where the housing market could potentially be going based on what we're seeing from lumber. But as I'm putting this together, I'm, I'm doing my research. I'm reading that Goldman Sachs is talking about how, you know, even if we were to see a recession, we have a strong job market and, you know, balance sheets at home are, are, are pretty stable. Now, you know, it kind of depends on the home, but I don't know, based on a lot of the reports that I'm reading, stories that I'm covering, information that I'm getting 
from firsthand experience, from emails that you guys are sending, from boots on the ground intel, from the folks out there on the front lines, the job market sucks. People are being laid off left and right. Bed Bath & Beyond is closing 150 stores. Uh, I mean, we have hiring freezes even in the tech sector. And, you know, most people are being really hurt by inflation. So I don't see how balance sheets can be in great financial positions and, you know, uh, and strong when these are things that are going on. So I'm really kind of curious of where they're getting their data from. But with that being said, I do believe that, you know, some of these things are really taking a toll on a lot of folks. And if you guys remember, I posted a video not too long ago. Actually, we were driving through Colorado during our summer road trip. We, uh, we you know, full-time van life. And we were driving through Colorado. Uh, we were driving through Colorado heading into Wyoming. And I, I stopped to, you know, record a video to share with you guys a story about mental health and how... Uh, folks, especially folks perhaps at the top, have the furthest to fall. Uh, as you know, in comparison to the, the the working class poor, the middle class barely getting by, making ends meet, living paycheck to paycheck. You know, the folks that are one paycheck away from being homeless, struggling to buy food, struggling to buy gas. I saw a woman the other day. Uh, I mean, she was bound and determined to do what she had to do, but she was dressed up in uh, business attire, but she was riding a bicycle because she had to get to work. And, you know, times are tough. It was 94 degrees outside. She was sweating. You could see it through the back of her, her clothing. But at the end of the day, to me, it looked like somebody was like, look, I got to get to work. I got to make this money. I got to feed my family. Where this, we actually, this was at a bank. It was at a Bank of America. And then as we go inside the Bank of America, the Bank of America associate that was helping us, not the teller, this was one of the Bank of America employees that has a desk. So I would assume that if you have a desk, you're a higher earner. He says, I'm looking for a second job because times are tough and inflation is killing me and, you know, money is tight. So what I'm saying is, you know, you, you take all these things, you put them together. Now, granted, these are small samples of what's the big picture, what's really going on. And perhaps Goldman Sachs isn't, you know, getting data from these folks. But at the end of the day, I think that whether you're at the bottom and the fall, if you know, if you had a fall, it wouldn't be any much further from where you've been for so long, which if that's the case and you want to improve that situation, by all means, please contact me. I love trying to help people, trying to help folks improve their financial situation. This is Dabu 7. We have a situation out of Tupelo, Mississippi, where an airport employee at the age of 29, they believe that this individual is Corey Patterson. He has posted on social media saying, sorry, everyone. Never actually wanted to hurt anyone. I love my parents and sister. This isn't your fault. Goodbye is the message that he's posted. And in the meantime, he has been circling a stolen aircraft from the airport around his town and threatening to crash it into the town's Walmart. This has sparked a frantic evacuation of homes and businesses as he continues to circle. This is a nine-seater plane taken from the Tupelo airport around 5 a.m. and he's just been going this whole time. He can't go forever. He's obviously going to run out of gas at some point. The aircraft is going to come down. And this is the current situation. This is an image that they're sharing out there of that aircraft doing that circling in this area. So they've been in contact with this man. He's threatening to crash this Beechcraft King Air 90 plane into those businesses. And this is what we know as of right now. So I'm going to continue to update with this as I get more information. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for the breaking news. Okay, guys, I tell you, I have a lot of uh, a lot of material here, and I can't do all of them today, so I'm going to put a lot of stuff in the description box. And this is one other article I will put in the description box, because I'm going to listen to the other one here from my friend here. He got a, a shorter video on it, uh, so I'm going to listen to him. But I hope you guys got, was aware of this thing about Rome, uh, recalls all assets to the Vatican within 30 days. Uh, so this is BP Earthwatch. I'm going to put it in the description box. I'm going to go on over here now to this other short article on it. I did show it on my last video 
But since it's a weekend and the Sabbath, I'll go ahead and show it again. And we've been following the uh, Vatican system for many, many years. You know, all the things going on. All roads lead to Rome, as they say. So uh, we'll go ahead. I put this in the description box, and I will go ahead and play the short one here to uh, hold some time uh, up here because I have a lot of things to cover. So let me go ahead and just uh, play it now. And I think when I play this, I'm going to get right straight into the minister who's talking about the famine. And then I'm going to get into Betty S., and uh, I think there's a few more things. There's not too many more things left here. I think there's another one here about um, De uh, Kevin that I might share and uh, my brother in Florida. And then we'll get into the Bible and into the mission report. And that'll be it. So let me go ahead and do that right now. Mute out again. World News Report today. Today, September 2nd, 2022, 5.30 p.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world, folks. Please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, Pope Francis has instructed all Vatican entities to move all funds to the Vatican Bank by September 30th. Pope Francis has ordered that the Holy See and connected entities move all financial assets to the Institution for Works of Religion, the IOR, commonly known as the Vatican Bank. The Pope's rescript, issued August 23rd, clarifies the interpretation of a paragraph in the new constitution of the Roman Cura, Pediacate Evangelium, promulgated in March. According to Francis's prescript, financial and liquid assets held in banks other than the Vatican Bank must be moved to the Vatican Bank within 30 days of September 1st, 2022. The Vatican Bank, based in Vatican City State, has 110 employees and 14,519 clients. As of 2021, it looked after $5.2 billion in euros of clients' assets, around $5.6 billion in U.S. dollars. Though commonly called a bank, the Vatican Bank is technically a financial institute with no branches working within Vatican State to provide services to clients, which include the Holy See and connected entities, religious orders, clergy, Catholic institutions, and the Holy See employees. In this August 23rd rescript, Pope Francis said Article 219, Paragraph 3 of the Predicate Evangelium must be interpreted to mean that the activity of asset manager and custodian of the movable patrimony of the Holy See and of the institutions connected with the Holy See is the exclusive responsibility of the Institution for Works of Religion or the Vatican Bank. The decree will force all Holy See institutions, including the Secretariat of State, to move their financial assets to the Vatican Bank by the end of September. The Secretariat of State is known to have vast assets and accounts in Swiss financial institutions, including Credit Suisse, through which the controversial London building investment was initially carried out. That was a scandal they were involved in. The other thing you'll need to know real quickly is that Chinese students are canceling their fall classes and moving back to China. That is the word on the street as of yesterday. God bless you and yours, folks. I'm just going to mention this. I forgot to mention it to you guys from Newsbreak. Prison air conditioning is coming too slowly for those who need it most. There's a lot of trouble going on in the prison systems. A lot of people are not, you know, they say some of the prison buildings are like over 130 degrees and people don't have enough uh, air and air conditioning and fans don't do any good. 
So I pray for the prison systems. I pray for them every night, but there's just a lot going on in the prison systems. So um, I will put this link in the description box. You can go ahead and read the whole article on it here. Um, I'm just not, not going to do it for copyright. Uh, I won't open it up, but uh, we're going to go on over here now and hear a little bit more from Kevin. And then I'm going to get a little bit more from uh, this here um, article came in August 31st. I didn't get to play it, but I want to play a little bit of it from Lewis. And then we're going to get into uh, Betty S. I mean, not Betty S. Uh, Betty S. is after this brother here, Dr. Gene Kim. And then I'm going to get into Betty S. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that right now. Oh, wow. Just so much to talk about, I'll tell you. So let me go ahead and do that right now. Close that again. That's the, my air condition in the background, if you hear it. Okay. So there's been a recent Yahoo News article releasing a statement from the Census Bureau, and it says that 3.8 million renters are going to be likely to be evicted and will be likely to be evicted in the next two months. This is a story that's on Yahoo News, and I wanted to share this with you guys just to kind of shed some light on some of the topics that I've been talking about with you here recently about the housing market, about the rental market, about renters, about um, jobs, job security, job loss, homelessness, possibility of homelessness, and many, many people um, potentially moving to live in their cars and do a little bit of stealth camping as they uh, are displaced from their homes, from their apartments, from whatever property that they they called home, uh, while we continuously fight inflation and other um and other political uh, fueled uh, obstacles and hindrances to our income, to our money, to our finances, to our ability to survive and potentially progress and grow and get beyond the status quo. But right now, it seems that a growing trend, a growing topic of discussion, an increasing, an increasingly higher amount of asks are coming through emails, coming through the groups, coming through the private messages with questions and uh, requests for information and, and strategies and tips to uh, just get by, just, you know, make ends meet. M many, many Americans are literally one paycheck away from homelessness, which is unbelievable. But there are ways to combat that and you know, el eliminate that possibility from your daily life and begin down the path of personal growth, personal financial growth, uh, building wealth, building out your portfolio, portfolio, you know, creating a better, more secu secure, a more financially secure future for your family. And, uh, but what we want to focus on right now is for anybody who's potentially at risk uh, and just needs to kind of get their head above water. And then from there, we can build on that and grow on that. But I just want to read you some of these headlines from this article. It says, for the first time ever, the median rent in the U.S. topped $2,000 a month. And that was in June. And the increases show no sign of stopping. And I can actually contest to that because, as you guys are aware, currently we're renting. And... Uh, interestingly enough, when we secured this particular apartment, we had a wait, which was fine because we secured it before we sold our house and we were going, we were using it as a, a vacation getaway in between before we were down here full time. And it gave us some time and some freedom and some flexibility to not rush and slowly transition and move some things here and there, go shopping, pick out furniture, place orders, wait for it even though we didn't, we weren't in a huge rush for it because we weren't here full time. So it just made the whole thing a little bit, the process a whole lot easier. But at the time we wanted a three bedroom and uh, the only thing that was available was there was one two bedroom available and that was it. So we were like, we're not in a rush, we're not in a hurry, put us down for a three, let us know when we can get it. And then ultimately it ended up being, I think it was like three or four months and we were able to get one which we were still ahead of schedule. So we went ahead and secured that, but that was it. That was it. However, fast forward to today and 
we actually walked uh, the complex and noticed how many units are vacant. And uh, we had a talk with somebody here on the, on site on the property, and they were telling us how the rates have increased. So the rental rates have increased tremendously as a result of a rise in home values in this particular area. Now, you may be saying to yourself, Kevin, what are you talking about? Home prices are falling. Home Homes are going for half price. You know, they're slashing prices, 40, 50 percent off. Nobody's buying. Sellers are sitting on the market and our housing market is potentially collapsing. It's crashing before our very eyes. What are you talking about? You're crazy. Home values are not going up. You yourself said it in a previous video that you noticed that some of the real estate in your area is coming down. Okay, sure. The thing is, real estate is specific, very, very specific. It's not uh, something that you can look at from 30,000 feet and get the full picture. It's specific to the region. It's specific to the season. It's specific to the zip code, the school district. Um, so with that being said, overall, there's been an increase in uh, assessed home values in the area. Now, what we're seeing on the market, to me, here, is the less than desirable properties that we're having a hard time selling to begin with. That's why they're still on the market, 100 plus, 150, 180 days, and dropping prices. But it doesn't mean that the home values in the area didn't appreciate. That appreciation in home values has just driven up the value in general, thus driving up the, the price for rentals and uh, why I think we're seeing some of these vacant units here as people are now uh, having to reconsider where they want to live and or if they can even afford it. But either way, I'm going to continue on with this article here. And it says that those rising rents mean that households representing a total of eight and a half million people were behind on their rent at the end of August, according to Census Bureau figures. And 3.8 million of those renters say they're somewhat or very likely to be evicted in the next two months. Now, this is not to single anybody out. This is not to point fingers. This is for us or for me, for the most part, really, to get a better idea and a better uh, understanding of who's out there watching, where you are right now financially, and what needs do you have that need to be addressed to potentially help you out of a really sticky situation of eviction. Now, somebody has commented on my video from earlier today, why would you share that personal information from your friend and the email that he sent you? Well, number one, uh, I don't really feel as though it's extremely personal seeing as how I left all the personal aspects out of it. Do you know his name? Do you know who he is? Do you know anything about him besides that he needs help? Much like I've been told in comments and emails from other folks how they need help too. So I'm taking the information that I've received, which if you pay attention to the video, the first thing I said was, please include more information besides I just need help. Because that doesn't really paint the full picture of what's going on. And, you know, it's like if, 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 if you walked into your house, your apartment, wherever you live, and all you heard was help, 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 hurry, help, I need help. Wouldn't it be beneficial for someone to say why they need help? Only for you to rush to them and discover that what you need to help them is back downstairs where you came from. And if they would have told you that to begin with, you could have helped them out better faster and more efficiently and more effectively. That's why I share this information. I'm leaving out the personal components. I'm leaving out the names unless they ask to be included. But I want to share with you some stories that are reoccurring all the time that everybody, a lot of people are faced with. I'm not going to say everybody. I'm not going to lump everybody, but a lot of people are faced with. I don't want to help just one person. I want to help everybody. So what good is it for me to just give this assistance and this aid and this help and these answers to somebody else when there's so many other people out there who could use this to help themselves, help their families get out of these situations.
is Louis. Today is August 31st, 2022, and welcome to the Grand Supreme News Channel. Before I start, guys, give this video a big thumbs up and share this video. We got some breaking news updates, and guys, we have some very important information coming out. And it says here, now they are warning us to prepare for a rare triple dip La Nina. All right, guys, so this is going to be a huge event, a massive storm that is going to impact millions in the sleeping giants. So you guys already know in the year 2022, there's been so many events, mega droughts, heat wave, storms. The only thing we haven't seen, uh, we've seen maybe one or two tropical storms, but we haven't seen hurricanes. And guys, again, I've been checking the... Uh, National Hurricane Center. I don't know what's going on here. I've never seen anything like this ever in my life. There's a lot of storms that's popping up, but they don't last long. They just die off in like two, three hours. So by this time, we should be seeing some kind of tropical storm impacting these areas. We haven't seen one. Actually, there was one right here not too long ago uh, last week. But... It's something going on when it comes to uh, hurricane season. Now, we haven't seen nothing in the month of August, and that's a big wake-up call. So now we are seeing something really big. Uh, experts are saying, expert are saying uh, that millions need to be prepared because this storm is going to be huge. So if we can't get a hurricane season, La Nina is going to start slamming certain parts of the Sleeping Giant. All right, guys, before I start, give this video a big... Up your Bibles, please, to James chapter 5 and Daniel chapter 11. With all the chaos going on and what the news is feeding you about the war that's going on or the next strain or the new disease that might pop out and they're distracting you with things going on in Hollywood with Elon Musk and all the attention is on Trump for some weird reason always trying to uh, nitpick and point out his faults or his issues but that is all a distraction that's all a distraction from what the deeper inside people those in power are doing and right under your nose, what they are doing is taking over the food economy. And what they're doing right under your noses is trying to receive more power to control you people. The Bible prophesied that one day in the tribulation there's going to be a great dearth and famine throughout the land. But how are you going to reach that point? Well, those minions of the wicked one who are behind the scenes they are deliberately starting things up and we're going to look at some scriptural portions that will show that demonic elites that they will take control of the food supply and people are actually starving during the tribulation why is that happening control the person's food when they're starving to death you'll control the whole world. You might say, how so? Because when the mark of the beast comes out in Revelation chapter 13, the verse says you cannot buy or sell except you have the mark of the beast. Yeah. So part of the Antichrist control and the demonic elite system is to make sure they control your very own food so that they can very much control your own life so that they can be dictators. Now, how soon are we reaching these proportions? Well, sooner than you think. The title of the article from The Hill, UN warns of famines of biblical proportions within the next year. And actually, from this article, this was supposed to happen, believe it or not, last year. This was supposed to happen last year. Well, if we were to buy past this, then how much sooner are we reaching the famine of biblical proportions? How much longer can we keep pushing away the inevitable, right? So this article title shows that we are literally in danger mode of famine. 
It's only a matter of time. If we were able to somewhat dodge it this year, I, much, I wonder how much sooner. This is from NPR, and remember, I'm quoting you mainstream news, so this is not some kind of conspiratorial or amateur blog post. This is from NPR, title of their article is, Record Number of People Worldwide Are Moving Towards Starvation, UN Warns. Uh, let me know if I'm cut out of bounds, okay? This is from David Beasley, who's the head of the UN World Food Program itself, okay? You know what he said? In its latest analysis shows that a record of 345 million acutely hungry people are marching to the brink of starvation. A 25% increase from 276 million at the start of 2022. Wow. And you know, the number stood at 135 million before the, the disease that we had in early 2020. You notice a huge increase from 135 from two years ago, ever since the disease came out, and then it just jumped to 345? Wow. This is too fast, don't you think so? For something to be a natural cause, it makes you wonder if there's something deliberately done to push the famine. Because this don't sound natural, right, when you hear the numbers? This sounds a little bit too fast. But let's take it for granted that it's natural. Let's take it for granted that it's natural. However, keep in mind that we do have a right to be suspicious and to question yeah. and not just easily trust whatever the news media says or what mainstream people say about, well, it's, these are all natural causes. When you look at numbers, we do have a right to question. So that's all I'm simply doing. Now, this is from the Russian newspaper source. This is actually from Russia itself. RT, all right? A lot of you know the RT News. The title of their article is Global Famine, Likely This Year, Putin Aid. That's what they said. Washington's attempts to take over Ukraine's grain may lead to a food crisis, according to the Russian official. It is important that in the conditions, for example, of a global famine that will occur closer to autumn, by the end of this year, all over the world, Russia should not suffer, but be full, fully provided with food. That's what uh, Russian sources are saying. So even Russia itself is admitting that there is a huge famine coming, and even up to, po to the point of this year. Now, if people want to argue about Russian propaganda, and you know, Russia always likes to blame the UN, the UN likes to blame on Russia, and what we see here is global elitists like to blame each other. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah. However, both of them agree with this one thing, which should be alarming. That is, a famine is headed our way sometime. Wow. And people are going to starve, and this is just the beginning. This is from the Epoch Times, and the Epoch Times, I'm not going to say that it's a reliable source because a lot of liberals hate it, but they quote a lot of experts here. So you can look at this article and look at what the experts say. And the title of the article is, Beijing Takeover of United Nations Presents Existential Threat to U.S. And actually, if you study that article, it is very disturbing on how many Chinese officials or people connected to China have uh, power seats within universities, within our government, within UN. And this has been demonstrated throughout the past two years. I've given you so many sources on that, so that's a no-brainer. And you can do a simple Google search if you're upset or you don't believe me. You research yourself, don't believe me. You research, research it yourself and look at how many articles are popping out on that. There is absolutely no doubt that there is some kind of uh, Chinese take over. And remember, China is ingrained with a lot of communism. But America, with this so uh, socialist, 
turning communist ideologies, that's why they can find things that they can agree upon with these Chinese officials and work together with them. But then later on, it so happened in some universities, they found out they were actually spies. <laughs> Yeah, come on. In liberal universities. Oh, you wonder how they got in, right? <laughs> you wonder how they got in? They believed the same belief as you did, stupid liberal professor you. Stupid liberal government official you. Dumb Americans. Yes, dumb Americans. All right, I live in America. Dumb Americans. America thinks they're so small. They're top of the food chain. They're just dumber as they can be, man. <laughs> But they're controlling, believe it or not, a lot of the food supply. Yeah. A lot of the food supply. So if you read that article, it's going to frighten you a bit. This is even more so in another article from the Epoch Times, title of their article, UN World Economic Forum Behind Global War on Farmers Experts. Yeah. They say Agenda 2030 development goals at root of sustainability policies that could lead to food shortages. What, what's going on here? Well, if you recall from other videos that I've demonstrated and taught you, the World Economic Forum, what they want to do is bring a better paradise to the world. So in order to bring a better paradise to the world, there's got to be more control to those in power. Yeah the more that they can keep track and the more power that they have with advancement of technology, why do you think they're going to neglect our food supply? Because that's a very important part of human society. So they're not just going to advance technology and take control over that. They have to take control and advance and dabble with your food supply. They'll have to do that. And if you read this article, it's not the article itself that I'm relying upon, but actually they name a lot of experts. And they give these names, and then they give the background of really what's going on. And like I said, it will frighten you. So it seems like that the farmers, remember, that's where we get all our food, obviously. Where we get all our food is right here from farmers from farmland. Now, if the Antichrist wants to rule over the common ordinary people, then he has to go for your food supply, as Revelation 13 talked about, right? You cannot buy or sell, you cannot eat, unless you have the mark of the beast. So, he has to take control over the food supply, and where you're going to get your food supply, common sense, is go to the farmlands, go to the farms, where they produce the food, give birth, plant food for you. The Antichrist needs to control it. The global elitists who are part of the Antichrist system, and that means they will have to control it. And that means the World Economic Forum, they definitely should have a big hand in it. And from that article from the experts, they've explained that it is happening. The World Economic Forum, they're taking a lot of the farmland. But this is uh, not new to us for a lot of people who heard about Bill Gates. He already uh, bought up a lot of farmland for himself. And he's uh, a hoard uh, he's all of a sudden buying stuff and people are wondering, why is he buying stuff? If you actually go to the uh, original article from, I think it's called the Land Times or something like a land report. There it is, the land report. The title of the article from the official land report where people want to get the current updates on what's going on with soil, land, and who's buying it, and who's controlling it, who's owning it. It says right here, Bill Gates, America's top farmland owner. Oh, now isn't it strange? People were always concerned about Bill Gates ever since two years ago. And years ago behind it, they were claiming that he's one of the elites that, to watch out for. And people are saying, well, it's not a big deal. But then when the disease happened around a few years ago, he got way more attention. Uh -huh. 
he all of a sudden switched his attention on that. Then all of a sudden he switches his attention on food? Yeah. I think that this is not a guy that, uh, that, is, very, uh, that is as innocent as you think. I think that there should be red flags going on. Why is he doing that? That's good. Why is he buying all of this kind of stuff? Unless the scriptures talked about in Daniel chapter 11, look at right there, that the Antichrist elitists, he will have a group of elites who will own food and land. And amazing, 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 uh, just how I told you guys, I found a, a sure show me about the two tractors this weekend, two tractors this weekend. Never seen a tractor riding around, never paid it no mind. But if I see things like that, I know it's a sign, a sign to me. I ask him, he tell me famine, Marner, famine, famine. Then I get up this morning to do my report for the video today. I come across this guy, worldwide famine is almost here, Dr. Gene Kim. So you need to go listen to the whole video. It's about an hour and seven minutes. I just played 13 minutes of it. Uh, I'm telling you guys, huh, keep your eyes open, okay? Yeshua is talking to us all the time. Jesus is talking to us all the time. But are we looking? Are we paying attention? Are we really got our mind focused on just the world? Or do you have your mind focused on Yeshua and the Bible and the prophecies and the things going on around us because we are in the end at the end, okay? So I'm going to go on over here now to Betty S., okay, message. And then I'm going to get into the Bible and let you guys go. Missions, I got a short mission report. And I'm going to get into the Bible. Oh, I got to find that. I don't even know where I put her now. I hope you guys know who Betty S. is. A lot of you write me about her. And you have to go to her, uh, you have to go to her, um, her email address is right here, okay? Betty S., okay? Right here, all right? If you want to contact her, because she's not on social media, uh, she's not on her website anymore. Okay, all these things I'm telling you. So I'm going to go ahead and share her message with you that she wrote me, see, one hour ago. Uh, this morning, this morning, uh, she wrote this and sent it to me. So I'm going to try to see, could I read it? Oh, man, okay, I got to put myself a little small here, okay, guys? Uh, but anyway, uh, Father, be with me as I read this message to the people. It's just important from one of your uh, messengers uh, so uh, we're going to go ahead and share it and then we get into uh, Isaiah 55 okay because time is running I'm already at an hour and 12 minutes so let me go ahead and read this the title the title here is here comes the warning here comes the warning brought today this word September 3rd 2022 if you are not living in your life if you are not living your life, okay, living your life, holy, you will be cut off. If you have hidden sin in your life, not repented of, and keep falling back to sin, you will be cut off. If you lie and say that you have been saved and, and, and are not living godly before me, you will be cut off. Your good deeds will not serve you. Your good deeds will not save you. I'm sorry. Your family will not save you. Your pride and ign ignorance will not save you. You cannot save you. There is a time, there will be a time when warnings will cease all over. Prophecy will cease, okay? Prophecy will cease. Remember the God, remember the gift of prophecy is different than the office of a prophet or a prophetess. Don't be fooled. Remember, my times are not your times, nor my ways your ways. Final judgment is not as far away as one would think. Behold, come knocking who will answer. Behold, come knocking who will answer. To the churches of man, behold, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Behold, come quickly, and my reward is with me. I come to render final judgment. Be prepared to give a final account to me. It is written, Blessed be the name of the Lord. You will be cut off, for you have loved your sin more than me. I am God, and only I can save you through repentance. Do notes, do notes me, says the Lord. Do not think you might have one more day, one more hour, for I tell you now, a 
a soul will be called this day. Okay. I hope that's it. Though I am merciful and grace, also know that I am holy, righteous, and coming soon as king and judge. So it's sent by Betty S. I uh, hope you guys hear that. If you want a copy, uh, just go to her email I just showed you and ask Betty for a copy. Uh, you can uh, write me and I'll probably give you a copy. Her email is here. All right, guys. Okay. All right. I hope you guys got it. Okay. And so I'm just telling you it's really important that we uh, obey our servants and prophets and prophetess and I really know that we're in the end at the end. So I'm going to go ahead now and play a short video for Missions Report. And then I'm going to get into the Bible, okay? Because we really appreciate all you guys that support missions. All our missionaries are out there uh, taking risk in their life every day. Uh, as the brother over in, uh, my friend over in uh, Nigeria was beat bad, beat bad and robbed. And his whole household got robbed. And, uh, and he had to uh, go and get some hospital care because he was bleeding eternally. So it's really time for us to know that we're in the end at the end. Um, I'm going to go ahead and find him. If I can find his mission report, I don't know why I can't find it. <laughs> I don't know. Every time I try to look for some things, it just don't come up quick enough. Okay, here it is. So anyway, let me go ahead and play this, and then I will get into the Word, uh, Isaiah 55, if you want to go join me, which, get your Bibles out. Uh, my husband must be still on a long phone call. He's not out yet, so he probably won't be joining me today. Uh, but he sends his love and, uh, and really uh, miss you guys when he's not on here to talk and show his face. But let me go ahead and do this right now. Uh, mute it out. God is good, God is good, and this is just amazing. I'm just here to let you know that this is another orphanage home that we are visiting today with a team here again, Feed My Ship today in Kenya. We are here again uh, coming to deliver some food to this wonderful orphanage, and also we are going to share a meal with them, and I want to praise the Lord for this opportunity and for this wonderful moment. This is what we love doing most, uh, just having the opportunity, having the chance to feed the children, share a meal with them, and also deliver food for them. I really appreciate uh, what I've seen today because this is what God wants. Yeah, God wants us to support these children for them to feel that they are loved.
thank this organization so much for having the children at heart. And we are looking forward working together to help that Charles. And may God bless, feed my sheep today, Kenya. That is what we do to serve the community, to serve the children who are less fortunate in the society. So today it has been a very good day. It has been a very enjoying day, a very peaceful day here at the orphanage home, cooking and enjoying and sharing meal with the children. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. I love the little children, getting what they need, food, shelter, clothing, whatever they need, mattresses, beds, uh, just so many things. There's so much poverty around the world, people. We really appreciate you taking care of Feed My Sheep today, uh, End Time Dream and Vision, Bob Barbara, and uh, Fill My Cup Ministries, and all the different ministries that can gather, con conjunct together to support one another, uh, especially the people who support the homeless as well all over America. Uh, we have a lot of people doing homeless people in California, uh, up in uh, Arkansas, and all over people supporting the homeless. So I hope you're supporting the homeless in your area over in uh, East Coast. Uh, so you know, you can all take a part, be a part of this great ministry because there's so many people in need. And I'm glad to see you. You have, How was your phone call? That's good. That's uh, so good. anyway, um, we are here. He's here to join us today. So I'm going to go ahead and get on over to, uh, it's hot today, people. I, I, I even, I don't even know if I turn the air on, will it, if, if you hear it in the background or not. But if, uh, I'm going to play, play it a little while because it's hot. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're going to go on over to the Bible here in Isaiah 55. And, uh, and, and it's a father who put it in front of my heart this morning. Because there's so many people are going to be hungry. We're going to be going through famine. I really go, we hope you go and listen to Gene's uh, video, uh, Gene Kim uh, video I just showed. Uh, really, really a lot of information there. So, we you know, we need to know that it's gone before us. Because I'm telling you, I never in my whole life been living in Colorado will see two tractors on the same day as we go out and as we come back. I, I, I just knew that was a message from Yeshua. So anyway, uh, let me go ahead and, uh, Father, um, Is the mic live? Yeah, be with us as we uh, read from Isaiah 55. Uh, it's such an important message for now. Uh, so we thank you for it, Father. We ask that your Holy Spirit come be with us now in the name of Yeshua Messiah. So you can go ahead and read that. And uh, I'll turn this off a bit. <laughs> The whole thing, or you just wanted to... No, the whole thing. The whole, okay, jump in if you need to. Mm -hmm. Come, everyone who is thirsty, come to the water, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you weigh out silver for what is not bread? And why do you labor for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in fatness. Turn your ears and come to me. Listen, that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my reliable, faithful love promised to David. Look, I have placed him as a witness to the ethno-linguistic nations, as a leader and commander to the people. Look, you will call to an ethno-linguistic nation that you did not know, and an ethno-linguistic nation that did not know you will run to you because of Yahuwah, your divine one, the set-apart one of Israel, who has glorified you. That is exactly what I was just talking to a young man with right right now a few minutes ago <laughs> seek Yahuwah while he may be found call on him while he is nearby let the wicked leave his path and the man of sin his thoughts let him return to Yahuwah and he will pity him and to our divine one who will abundantly forgive him yeah and the lady was just saying this morning the devil trying to make you feel like you're unworthy uh, you know God you oh you're gonna done so much sin in your life and God ain't gonna forgive you don't listen to the devil because he has no future people it's time to really know Yeshua is abundantly, what he said, abundantly he will forgive you. So you need to go and uh, bow down before him and talk to him about your troubles, your secrets, what Betty S. just talked about. Going to him and confessing your sins, not holding on to secret sins, getting rid of sin. Uh, and announcing it because he already know what you're doing. You might as well announce it. You might as well confess it. He said if we confess our sins, he's what? 
faithfully will forgive you from all unrighteousness. We need to confess our sins and we need to do it daily, dying daily, dying daily, dying daily. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares you who. Yes. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there, unless they saturate the earth and make it produce and sprout and give seed to the farmer who sows and bread to the eater. That's what it's going to be. The farmers are going away. Uh, Yeshua have a way of putting mount, what water in the mountain, uh, water gushing out of the rock in the mountains. You know, he has a thousand ways to take care of his children. Forty years in the wilderness, they didn't have to go and buy new shoes. They didn't have to go and change their clothes. They didn't have to go to the dentist. They didn't, you know, I think about that all the time, you know. Yeshua so is an amazing God, but we don't want to believe. We don't want to believe. He said, you know, for those that believe, he always said, for whosoever believe in me should have eternal life. Who believe? And a lot of us just doubting too much. And don't believe anything. And so you need to be having a relationship with him, becoming born again. This is the time, people. Go ahead, go ahead. So also my word will be what goes from my mouth. Yeah. It will not return to me useless, <laughs> but it will accomplish that which I wish, and it will succeed in that for which I sent it. Right. For you will go out in joy and be led along peacefully. The mountains and the hills will break out in joyful shouts before you. And all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Hallelujah. Instead of the thorn bushes, the cypress will grow. And instead of the briar, the myrtle tree will grow. And it will be for Yahuwah, for his name, as an everlasting sign that will not be cut off. I prayed a prayer last night about something I'm going through. And I asked the Lord what he thought about it. And that's what he gave me at the end here. That whatever he says is going to happen is going to come to pass. If he say we believe in his promises... We reflect on his promises, on his word, not what the look, not the circumstances around us. We get all caught up into that. Oh, I can't pay my bill. Oh, I can't pay this. Oh, what's going to happen here? Oh, Father, oh, Father. And I get that way too, okay? I'm human just like you. And he gave me this today showing me absolutely that he will take care of it. Like he said, oh, I'm not, that's not the right way. Uh, For you will go out in joy and be led among peacefully. The mountains and the hills will break out and joyful shouts before you. And all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Hallelujah. So he's telling me it's coming to pass. Don't worry about it. And you know, you have, if you go and talk to the Father and just ask him to give you a dream, give you a revelation, give you a sign, he will, people. We need to start trusting in him because this world's going away. I mean, you know, I get, up, I say, man, we, everything's going up, everything's going up. Like Kevin saying, all the people are homeless, evicted, getting all this happening, that happening. We need to know that this world is going away. It really is. They want you to have electric cars and all these things. They're trying to do their one world system and they want it their way. It's going to be Yeshua's way, people. He is the creator of all people, all humans, all nationalities of people. He said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein. He owned all of it. He will have the last laugh. He will have the last say so. So you better believe it, people. You better believe it. So I'm going to go ahead and go because time is going. I know I'm just preaching here, but I'm just so happy to be a part of the kingdom of God and knowing that he's my kingdom. He's going to be my king and my kingdom. He's going to put his people in his kingdom. That's what I want to say. So uh, let's go ahead and get over here to Maranatha and end this video. Uh, a real wonderful uh, Maranatha today. I, I can't wait to hear it myself if I can find it. <laughs> I hope I didn't close it out. Oh, there it is. Okay. So uh, we're going to go and listen to uh, all nations follow America's lead. All nations follow America's lead. So let me go ahead and... Uh, Go ahead and mute that out. July 25, all nations follow America's lead. When all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, 
sackbut psaltery and all kinds of music all the people the nations and the languages fell down and worshiped the golden image that nebuchadnezzar the king had set up daniel 3 7 history will be repeated false religion will be exalted the first day of the week, a common working day, possessing no sanctity whatever, will be set up as was the image of ba at Babylon. All nations and tongues and peoples will be commanded to worship this spurious Sabbath. This is Satan's plan to make of no account the day instituted by God and given to the world as a memorial of creation. The decree enforcing the worship of this day is to go forth to all the world. As America, the land of religious liberty, shall unite with the papacy in forcing the conscience and compelling men to honor the false Sabbath, the people of every country on the globe will be led to follow her example. Foreign nations will follow the example of the United States. Though she leads out, yet the same crisis will come upon our people in all parts of the world. Nations will be stirred to their very center, Support will be withdrawn from those who proclaim God's only standard of righteousness, the only sure test of character, and all who will not bow to the decree of the national councils and obey the national laws to exalt the Sabbath instituted by the man of sin to the disregard of God's holy day will feel not the oppressive power of popery alone, but of the Protestant world, the image of the beast." The season of distress before God's people will call for a faith that will not falter. His children must make it manifest that he is the only object of their worship and that no consideration, not even that of life itself, can induce them to make the least concession to false worship. To the loyal heart, the commands of sinful, finite men will sink into insignificance beside the word of the eternal God. Truth will be obeyed, though the result be imprisonment or exile or death. Oh boy, oh boy! I did. I tell you guys, I don't. I don't go look for these things. You just tell me where to go. <laughs> uh, tying in right with the message today, as we just showed you about the uh, Vatican, what they doing, what they talk about, what they doing. Okay. And so we're going to know this. They want to have their day in the sun. But you need to know the Sabbath is a sign for God's people. It really is, people. So I'm going to go ahead and close out now. As we know, uh, people have broken the commandments for many years. They don't want to go by it. They don't want to go by it. They want to go by man. They want to follow man. So uh, it's time to really give our life to Messiah as war and the bear and all these different uh, uh, nations against nations, kingdom against kingdoms, as uh, Daniel said to us many, many, many centuries and, oh man, years and years and centuries ago. Uh, but we know that, uh, like I said, keep my Sabbath set apart and they will be assigned between me and you so that you will know that I am Jehovah, your Elohim, uh, and so we need to know the whole world will wander out of the beast system. Absolutely, people. Uh, as we know, we're getting ready for war all over the land, all over the land, okay? The two farmers, I tell you, it was not a coincidence to see them two in one day. Wasn't that amazing, babe? Uh, so we're going to go ahead and close out. Uh, I hope you've given some time to Yeshua today, uh, worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out now, people. Where is my... Um, closing thing okay so uh click the subscribe like bell and subscribe to our youtube channel uh and click the like button and click the notification bell please share our videos i know we ha don't have a big massive ministry but this ministry is very powerful uh reaching a lot of people helping a lot of people uh and god is blessing all the time so uh we want to just say thank you thank you thank you for all your offerings to help your homeless the orphans the widows those in need in mission fields May Yahuwah richly bless each, each and every one of you who give for these purposes. Uh, our hashtags, um, donate by cash app if you like to. Uh, also, our digital business card. Uh, also, uh, other donation options at our website, uh, fmcmi.org, marner.campbell at gmail.com at PayPal. And also, you can mail in your donations to Fill My Cup Ministries, Post Office Box 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81215. 
And shipping address is Fill My Cup Ministries, 1501 Main Street, number 414, Canyon City, Colorado, 81212. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out, people, because I've really been just talking a lot. But I had a lot of material, and I still didn't show some things. I will put things in the description box that I mentioned for you guys to go listen to, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and close out uh, right now. I hope you guys have a wonderful Sabbath. Uh, let us say, let everything that have breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. So uh, we're going to go ahead and close out with prayer. And uh, if I can find what I want to put up here now. I think I'm just going to put this up here. Because we look forward to his coming. Uh, the trumpet's going to be sounding, I hope, in one day. Because uh, we know we got Feast of Trumpets heading our way here soon. So uh, we ask that you guys please take part in some of the feasts. Uh, and really understand Yeshua is our master and savior. And he said that if you would watch and pray every day, watch and pray, because you don't know, you don't know when he's going to knock on your door. So just be really ready at all times. So you want to go ahead and pray for us? Or you have something to tell us? Anything exciting going on? Or? <laughs> uh, maybe later. It's a, okay. it's a movie's work. Okay. A couple movies, but it sounds all good. Right. Father, we just thank you for what you're doing in people's lives, our friends, our family, our people we know all over this planet, Father, those that are seeking you, Father, some that are running from you, some are coming back to you, Father, your children, you know who are yours, and you'll have <laughs> us all ready to meet you on that day, yes. that's the exciting yeah. part, and thank you for everybody that gets to view the video, thank you for all our supporters, Father, people that pray for us, we pray for them, Father. We love you so much. What a privilege to be in your family. Mm -hmm. Pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you so much for all you do for us. So, people, we always continually pray and pray for us. Uh, we've just been trying to get settled with a family member. And thank you for all the prayers. And just continue praying. Because we still got one little thing to settle. So, keep praying that all these things smooth out uh, for her new location, new place. Uh, so we thank you so much, and I'm going to say uh, Shabbat Shalom, and we'll see you on another video, and enjoy your Sabbath, okay? I love you so much. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Bye-bye. <laughs>